Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. Um, as you can see, I'm back from vacation now. I'm back in my studio. But anyway, uh, let me just continue with uh, my uh, series on first year calculus and my sub-series on applications. So today I'm gonna talk about exponential growth and decay. This is an important application of uh, calculus and it's uh, also uh, very common. You'll see it a lot uh, in the sciences. There's several examples of it. Anyway, let's begin. Um, so what is exponential growth and decay? Well, it's just uh, the behavior exhibited by exponential functions. I guess first I have to define those. Exponential function is just a function of the form f of x equals a times b to the x, where b is a positive real number. Uh, a is just an arbitrary uh, non-zero uh, number, uh, real number, and x is the argument of the function, which is a real number. Um, so it just looks either if it's increasing, if b is greater than 1, the b is called the base. If the base is greater than 1, then we have uh, what's called exponential growth, and it looks like the blue curve. And for both of these curves, a is 1, but it doesn't have to be. And then if b is less than uh, 1, then we get what's called exponential decay, which is like the red curve. So for the example shown here, uh, the base for the exponential growth is 2, and for the exponential decay is 1 half. And there's another way we can write uh, these exponential functions. We can write them in terms of E, the, the base of natural logarithms, or Euler's constant, if you like, which is about 2.718. Uh, this is a more commonly used form, and I think a nicer form. So we can write f of x as a e to the kx, where now k is another constant related to b. k is just the natural logarithm, or, or e to the b, and b, uh, what is it? b is e to the k, and k is the natural logarithm of b, and k is what's called the uh, growth rate, um, sometimes the relative growth rate. Anyway, that, that's what exponential functions are. And you might wonder what the relationship uh, these have uh, with calculus. And actually, uh, the reason that these functions are so common and so important is that they, uh, they satisfy a very simple differential equation. Uh, and the differential equation is a couple ways you can write it. Uh, you can write f prime of x, that's uh, Newton's uh, notation, f prime of x is k times f of x. It just says the derivative of f is proportional to f, uh, where the constant proportionality is the growth rate, k. And another way we can write this is using Leibniz notation. We can say y equals f of x, and then we can write dy dx equals k times y. So uh, how would we solve this differential equation? Uh, differential equations is a pretty complicated area of calculus. Most people don't learn it until about third year calculus, but this is probably the simplest, one of the simplest uh, differential equations there is. And it's a simple type of differential equation called a separable differential equation. This just means you can separate the variables. So uh, if you look at the Leibniz form of this equation, dy dx, which I wrote down in equation 4, dy dx equals k times y, what we can do is we can, uh, the first thing we can do is we're going to multiply both sides of that equation by dx. Then you get dy equals ky dx. Now we can divide both sides by y, and now you'll notice that you just get things involving y and dy on the left, and then you get things just involving x and dx on the right. In particular, for this, this uh, equation, we get dy over y equals k dx. Well, now we're almost done. Now all we have to do is integrate both sides. So we write the integral of dy over y on the left equals the integral of k dx on the right. These are both very easy integrals. We know that the integral of dy over y is just the natural logarithm of y plus some um, integration constant, if you like. Actually, technically, it's the actual natural logarithm of uh, the absolute value of y. And then the right side is just k times x plus some integration constant. So now all we have to do is exponentiate both sides. And when we do that, we get uh, e to the y equals, uh, 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 I don't know, 
you get you get what e to the ln y. That's just y um, equals, uh, and that that's also f of x, and that's equal to um, a e to the kx, uh, where a is now e to the c. So that's a new integration constant, it's a positive constant, um, and uh, um, uh, k is another constant, another positive constant. Uh, so that that or uh, that that or no, it doesn't have, k doesn't have to be positive, but um, that that is the uh, general solution to uh, um, the differential equation we started with. So that's how you solve this differential equation. You see that it leads to arbitrary. Uh, the solution is always an exponential function, where these uh, a and k are arbitrary constants. Um, so that's how they arise. And uh, now I'm just going to go over a few examples. So probably the one I think most of you are probably most familiar with is, is compound interest, uh, and particularly continuously compounded interest. I have another video I made several months ago on compound interest. You might want to watch that one. I go into much more detail in that video about how to derive these formulas for not just continuously compounded interest, but you know, uh, uh, discrete compound interest where the interest is compounded over a fixed period of time, usually to annually, quarterly, monthly, um, so on. Uh, and when you let the size of the interval go to zero, you get what's called continuously compounded interest, which has a simple form. It's just the same form I wrote down earlier. We just changed the variable name. So usually the customary way to write this is we say A of T equals p e to the r t, where p is your principal, that's the initial amount of your investment in dollars. Uh, r is the uh, um, interest rate, and uh, um, usually write it as a percent per year, uh, so you have to multiply r by 100 if you want it in percent. So for instance, if uh, your interest rate is 5% a year, then r would be 0 0.05, and t is just the number of years of your investment. And then A of T is the amount of money in your account after T years. So I uh, give a couple examples here. If R is 5% a year, that, that's a pretty high uh, interest rate these days. It didn't used to be. In the old days, I remember when, uh, you know, banks used to pay pretty high annual interest. Uh, uh, I think when I was a kid, it was usually around 5 or 6% a year. So uh, at that time, if you had an initial investment of $10,000, which I guess was a lot of money back then. Um, after 20 years, your your account value would be about $27,000, uh, just 10,000 times E, because uh, the exponent in this case is 0 0.05 times 20, which is one. And if you kept it in for 40 years, then you'd have uh, 10,000 E squared, and e, now it's about $74,000. So you'd have a lot of money after 40 years, of course. Uh, probably would just barely keep up with inflation if that was the case. But anyway, uh, so that's one example. And another example is uh, what's called Malthusian population growth, which is really just another name for exponential population growth. And this is an important example because a lot of populations, a lot of countries, uh, the population growth is approximately exponential or Malthusian. As a matter of fact, the world population growth rate was exponential for a really long time. As a matter of fact, I think it grew even faster than exponentially. Uh, you know, the, 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 the world population growth rate peaked. I think it was around 2.1% a year in 1962. It was, it was around 2% for most of the 20th century. It, 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 um, and as a result, the, the world population grew grew quite a bit in the 20th century. In, in 1900, it was less than 2 billion. But then by 2000, it got over 6 billion. So it over tripled. The, the world population more than tripled during the 20th century. But the good news is that it slowed down quite a bit in the 21st century. Uh, I guess uh, most of the world now... Um, is more developed and, uh, you know, people are either uh, using uh, contraceptives or they're uh, not having as many kids, you know, uh, 
Um, they're moving into cities and, uh, um, you know, uh, they're not growing as fast as they used to, I guess. Uh, so that, that, that's good news. That means that our world population is not, you know, we, I used to hear when I was a kid, a lot of, you know, a lot of alarming facts about the population explosion, you know, uh, but, but that's a problem that by and large has been solved, I'd say. Uh, I mean, I think there, there's still too many people in the world, but but it's not as big a problem as it used to be, or at least as, as big as we used to think it was. And now they're estimating that the world population by um, 2100 will only be about 10 billion. So um, anyway, uh, so we no longer have Malthusian world population growth. And, and I think I should say one more thing about this. Uh, uh, Malthusian population growth can't be sustained for any population, doesn't matter what it is, because because uh, one assumption of Malthusian population growth is that you have unlimited resources, but of course you're never going to have unlimited resources, so eventually any population, uh, you know, uh, is going to have to either slow down or die, um, and you see this a lot, um, anyway, uh, enough of that. Um, third example, uh, you want to know an, a good example of, of an exponential uh, decay? Well, radioactive decay is a good example of that. If you have a radioactive substance like uranium or carbon-14, um, the, the nuclei in that substance are unstable and they decay at a fixed rate. There's a fixed probability every every second or every year, depending on how radioactive it is, that any given nuclei will decay. And this leads to an exponential uh, um, decrease in the amount of the radioactive substance. And uh, we can write the equation for it in two different ways. We can say N of T, that's the number, uh, uh, the amount, I guess you could write that as the number of, of atoms or the you know, the weight mass of the radioactive substance after time t, that's just either equal to the initial amount, which we call n0, times e to the minus rt, where r is the decay rate. Um, that's one way you can write this equation, but it's more customary to write it in terms of the half-life. So if you write if you write the equation in terms of the half-life, you get n of t equals n0 over e to the minus t over t1 half, where t1 half is, is what's called the half-life of the radioactive substance. And we can express that in terms of its decay rate r, just as ln2 over r. Um, so anyway, that's, that's, exp that's radioactive decay, and that's a very useful thing to know. So anyway, those are just uh, some examples of exponential growth and decay. And I may do more videos on this. I'm not sure yet. Um, I already have uh, more detailed videos on each of these examples. So you might want to check those out. But anyway, that concludes my uh, video for today. Thank you for watching. Long live math. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.